Welcome back to Upside Down Data. Let's talk about Ethereum's outlook. So with Ethereum, it's in an interesting spot where we just saw Bitcoin spot ETF launch that's drawn massive inflows into the Bitcoin market. In fact, record flows, really totally unexpected. I don't think even the most bullish of people really expected it to be this massive. And that's really been one of the things driving Bitcoin's price up. And so the hope with Ethereum from a lot of Ethereum bulls is that the same thing will happen here that Ethereum is going to get a spot ETH ETF and that that will then catalyze a massive move up in price. But let's talk about whether or not that's as sure of a thing as some people are making it out to be. So for some context with Ethereum, it currently has futures ETFs that are trading. The SEC approved those. Those exist. So the argument that's been going on for why people are so confident that ETH will get a spot ETF is that for Bitcoin, one of the main reasons why Bitcoin actually got its spot ETF was that the SEC had already approved the futures ETFs. And those, the future price of Bitcoin, very closely tracks the actual price, the spot price of Bitcoin. So basically the argument that was put forward in that Grayscale lawsuit was that how can you be approving a futures product and not a spot product when the actual price, you know, basically the price between them go together hand in hand. Where's the manipulation that you're talking about? It doesn't make any sense. And the court agreed with that. They basically said it was arbitrary and capricious to approve the futures product, but not the spot product. And that more or less forced the SEC's hand to end up approving the spot Bitcoin ETS. But with Ethereum, it's possible that that connection is not as close as people think. So basically the correlation dynamics between Ethereum spot and futures products are under scrutiny. And it's possible the SEC might think that they're different enough, that they don't hang together well enough, the correlation's low enough between futures and the spot price, that they could actually make a stronger argument for why that in and of itself would be a reason for having these differences in approvals, where you could approve the futures uh, products, but not the spot product. And they could you know, claim manipulation and all the other things they claimed with Bitcoin. And maybe they could actually convince a court of that. We also have to remember that Gary Gensler absolutely hates crypto. He loathes crypto and he is not going to approve products unless he absolutely has to most likely. So it would not surprise me personally if they do try to pull some of the shenanigans or at the very least have it come up to be these first applications hit their final deadline, SEC denies, and then they take their chances in court. I would expect that at least one of the one, one of the potential issuers would sue the SEC and try and use basically the same arguments that are used with Bitcoin, but then be how does the court respond to that? So that's something that we're going to have to keep an eye on. There's a lot of speculation and a lot of narratives about this where it's going to be hard to know what's going to happen. And even if we do get that ETH ETF, the other thing we'll have to keep an eye on is, can it hit the expectations of inflows that would be set for it? I think Bitcoin set an extremely high bar with these massive inflows it's seen, where it's possible ETH wouldn't live up to that. And if the market got a little ahead of itself and just assumed that ETH would follow suit with Bitcoin with these massive record flows, and it doesn't, and ETH doesn't get that into a potential ETF, that could also be bearish. So there are multiple things that in the short term could actually be not great for Ethereum. If just a denial of the ETF in and of itself would probably be short-term bearish, at least see some correction I would expect. And then if it did get an ETF, but the inflows were underwhelming, that could also potentially have a similar impact. So I wanted to talk about this because I think it gives useful context for what I want to talk about next. And really the main thing I want to talk about here is that there's a lot of catalysts that could push things one way or the other that could send ETH way higher or could cause a correction. But forecasting that is going to be extremely difficult. There's just too many variables. What are the SEC going to do? What's the reaction from issuers going to be? How is the course going to respond? All these different things. It's really hard to know. That's why I like to look at our models, which aren't worried about the hype, the emotions, the narratives. They're looking at the underlying market dynamics and telling it like they see it. So let's go ahead and talk about what some of our models are seeing about ETH and its short and long-term prospects. So we, when we look at the short-term UDPI for ETH, so this is our upside downside potential indicator. It's one of our risk models that we have here on this channel. This is the short-term version of that. So higher values mean higher risk, lower values mean lower risk. And so you can see this does a really good job of capturing these overextended points in ETH's past, as well as these low risk, nice bottom accumulation points. What we can see is that coming out of the bottom here, then going in, we're kind of down in this range. We kind of oscillated. The highest we got was right after the merge, going up to 2.6, but kind of just going back into these accumulation zones and these local tops, so on and so forth. We've now broken above that. We've actually gotten all the way up to 3.3 on the short-term UDPI. The max of the scale is five. 
So we've eaten up a lot of the short-term upside potential that Link has available to it. Now, not all of it. It certainly could go higher, and it has in the past. But we've gotten pretty extended here, even as we've been rallying into the all-time highs. This rally here, the model thing we're exhausting that short-term upside potential. So it certainly could rally higher, right? It would not surprise me, especially if Bitcoin keeps doing what it's doing, for ETH to make a run at its all-time highs in the not-too-distant future. But at some point, it seems like we're going to have to cool off. We're going to have to see short-term risk cool off, reset, before that next leg can really materialize. So I think it's reasonable to think that ETH could keep pushing from here. But I do think in some time in the not-too-distant future, we're going to have some kind of a cooling-off point, And it would really be healthy for the market. It's not good for the market to get these really extended levels and stay there. You like to see it kind of move up, reset, reset the base, and then you move back up again. We've seen that in the past. Move up, reset with some consolidation, then move up to the ultimate move to the top. That's what we'd like to see. Some cooling off period that we can have a more extended bull run with multiple different legs that bring us up to higher. Whereas if we just go shooting off to the highest levels now, we could blow ourselves out and have a much deeper, nastier correction that we have to endure. We don't want to see that happen. We want to have a healthy building bull market, not a blow off immediate bull market, in my opinion. And we also see this when we look at the long term UDPI. So this is also getting a bit extended here, but still lower than the short term. This is 1.42. The long term UDPI is at this cares about moves that play out over months, so a bit longer in its time horizon. So a similar thing here would not surprise me to get up to some of these higher levels, for example, like we saw over here, or like we've seen in the kind of initial legs up of prior bull markets. But it would, again, be nice to see that cool off. I would really like to see a rally materialize out of these deep negatives, not out of this current level. Basically, when you're down here, that's a pretty good green light that it's a good accumulation zone. That's what we saw. You know, buying ETH at 1.6K, we're now well up over 4K. A very nice move. But buying at 4K when the UDPI is all the way up here, there's probably less room to run in this rally. So that's where, again, I'd like to see ETH catch its breath at some point let this reset, which could then really set up that nice accumulation point before that next move up. So the way I'm looking at these two risk models is that there is still more room to run. It won't be surprising for me in the short term if we end up doing that. But I do think it would be healthy for the market to have a pullback or at least a consolidation at some point in the not too distant future to let things reset more before setting the stage to move up. Because if we just go immediately up to these really high levels, I'll think it start getting more concerned that that's going to be a more meaningful top that we might have some more pain that we'd have to endure to reset things. If leverage gets too built up in the system, for example, to flush all that out might take more time and more pain than we'd like to see. I'd like to see a slower uh, bull market with more pullbacks along the way to really be a healthier dynamic. What re uh, risk never gets so overextended that it marks those points of exuberance that oftentimes note or mark these very notable tops that can take either a really long time to kind of get out of to go on the next leg or can actually be the bull market top. So not financial advice, you should make your own opinion, but that's one of the things that I'm looking at when I look at these models. But those aren't the only models that matter that we can look at. So another one that we have here is our forecast model. So this is basically given the probability of upside six months in the future. So how likely it is that the price of ETH will be above where it is right now, six months in the future. So basically a value, for example, of 0.94 would be 94% chance of upside in six months. A value of 0.09 would be only 9% chance of upside in six months. And you see this did a really good job of basically identifying when the market was soon going to be going into a bear market, getting really bearish at the all-time high. We then went into the bear market, but then flipping bullish again right at the right time to then ride this move up. And it's actually very bullish now up at uh, just around 90% chance of upside of, in six months from now. So the forecast model remains bullish. It currently isn't seeing an indication that we're going to enter into, for example, a massive bear market like here. So even if we do get some short-term volatility, like, for example, something happens with the uh, spot ETF applications that get denied, whatever the case may be, there could be short-term volatility. That's all fine. But it's saying in that medium, longer-term view, it still thinks up is the likely direction for ETH. And so that's where, when we look at some of these other models, again, we'd like to see risk reset, but some of that's more of a short-term consideration. And in that medium to long-term view, it still thinks that up is the plausible direction for ETH. We'd also see if we look at our momentum bias indicator, it also gives us a nice view of the longer-term perspective and some interesting information. So this cares about momentum. So basically, is momentum for ETH biased to the upside or biased to the downside? 
And it tends to behave in distinct ways in different parts of the market cycle. So in bear markets, it spends much more time in the red than in the green. Bull markets, much more time in the green than in the red. And in, in these transitions out of bear markets into bull markets, it's kind of oscillation around zero that I've talked about many times in the past. Now, with the more recent behavior, it's certainly starting to look much more like we're entering into that bull market footing, something like here, where we go up into the green, test back around zero, but then now we're shooting off to the races again. Now, one thing to keep an eye on is that when you get to these really overextended points of momentum, those can often act as at least local tops or at least points where consolidation happens. It's another thing that's suggesting to me that it would not be surprising for ETH to catch its breath in the not too distant future. Maybe, for example, when it retests its all-time highs, consolidates there for a while. But that would not be bearish. And I think that's really important to note here that that would just be a normal activity that might just be in service of us ultimately going off on a big parabolic run to massively higher new all-time highs. And so really what we're seeing is a repeating of the cycle. We had the bear market, very obvious when you just look at it, bear market behavior on the MBI. We then had the reaccumulation at the bottom of the bear market moving into the bull. And now it looks like we're in the middle of the bull market. We're in the early to middle stages of that bull market. And again, if we get that kind of more healthy market structure, I think this could play itself out for a while. We don't completely blow ourselves out and just get to unsustainable momentum levels that end up just being a case where people get too euphoric and then the bottom falls up from the market and we just go into a longer correction or even a bear market. Then I think this could continue. And so I'd, again, like to see this to reset, go back down closer to zero and basically spend its time down in these levels for ultimately putting in these massive moves to the upside, pushing us up into what is ultimately the all-time high. So in terms of how that all plays out, it's anyone's guess, right? If we do get a spot uh, ETF and there is massive inflows into it, it could just go crazy immediately, get us up to these high levels, and we could end up putting in a market cycle top a little bit on the shoot, uh, sooner side, potentially in that kind of scenario. Or we could have a more drawn out cycle where we end up actually having a healthier market dynamic where we're not just blowing ourselves out immediately, we're actually putting in a more sustainable rally before ultimately the big parabola to the actual top. And that could then take us longer to the future. What's going to happen is anyone's guess. And that's why I'm going to be data driven. I'm going to be watching what our risk models are saying. I'm going to be watching what the forecast model says, watching what the MBI says, and make my opinion based on that. If it looks like we are going into an early possible top, that will be my, my viewpoint. If we develop in a way that looks like it can sustain a longer market cycle, maybe even higher prices, that will be my base case. It's all going to be data dependent. And that's the way that I prefer to run this because so much of these narratives and these catalysts is uncertain that trying to kind of forecast what exactly you think is going to happen a year, two years in the future, I think doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I prefer to be grounded in the data, what the models say, and base my opinions based on that. So that's how I personally will be navigating the market but you should do what you think makes the most sense to you. All right, if you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us over on X, a lot of updates from our models and more over there. And you can see live data from our models over at our website, partydigital.io, link in the description.